Hey, which of these two views, isometric or side view, do you think gives the best idea of the shape of the robot R2-D2? I think the isometric. That's why engineers and designers learn to sketch and draw in 3D. It's the best way to communicate. Takes a bit of practice though. Take a look at this cube from above. Notice how we've positioned one corner coming straight towards you. That's how we draw an isometric. The line that I'm darkening in is the edge that's facing the front. So the front kind of angles away from you in that direction. Otherwise you wouldn't be able to see the front side and top all at once. Don't start drawing yet, this is a little peek ahead. We're going to draw the robot with half a sphere. Then we'll go ahead and add a cylinder underneath it, a smaller cone shape for the bottom of the body. Then we need to draw the eye on. Now the trick is, on a cylinder, where's the front? Which way is it facing? Have a look at a cylinder from above. It looks like a circle. Is the front coming straight towards you? It's exactly the same as on the cube. The front is facing off to the side. But here's a trick. If you have a splat, notice there's four little blips. Okay, if I place those on the ellipse and trace a little line all facing towards the center, if I sketch a line joining those blips, that's how you find the front direction. You could think of the others as the right and left. I'm going to drop a line down that would be straight down the front of the robot. If it was a shirt, that's where you put the buttons. If it's an eye, then you know which way to face the front. That's a really good trick. Let's start off by drawing the sphere. I've kind of ghosted in that for you, starting point. Lightly sketch in the three ellipses and draw your half a sphere over the top. I'm going to darken in that ellipse I'm leaving a couple of millimetres. We'll come back and darken that in later. Leave a few more millimetres, and that is the bottom of the head that rotates on top of the robot. A little bit of rubbish there. I'm using the splat to slide down and drawing lots of lines. I'm giving that dark detail. Measure down about 30 millimetres, and then another three while you're at it. Grab your ellipse guide and to make sure I slide straight down, I'm putting a rule on the edge. Slide down until you find the mark, half an ellipse, slide down to your other three and an ellipse, but don't make it so wide. Here's why. We're going to angle where we join to give a cone kind of shape. Connect the sides of the cylinder. Here's that trick again. We're using the little blip to make a mark and that faces the front. If I draw a line straight down, anywhere on that line is really facing the front. Let's draw the shoulder in. I need to go on the right hand direction. So I'm using that blip to mark the right hand side. The center of the shoulder, center of the circle, is about five millimeters down according to my measurements. That line I'm sketching on the splat angle is the center line that my cylinder will sit on. Notice the two little alignment marks, line them up with that direction, draw half and ellipse. How far does it come out? I'm measuring five millimeters and then I'm lining up the ellipse with that mark and drawing in a full circle. Connect the top and bottom and you've made a little cylinder now it's time to drop some lines straight down from the front and the back of that ellipse. Mark off how far down you want it to come. Don't forget that line at the back as well. So use the splat angles on the right and left to cut that off. It looks like the bottom of a cube. Now I'm going to bring in those lines on a slight angle. Here I've decided to stop Erase the bottom of the robot to make it easy to sketch this in. So there's my little slopey bits. Now we're going to drop some short lines straight down. Should be three, and it's going to end like the bottom of a cube. But I'm just going to guess the splat angles on the left 
and on the right. This little detail here gets a bit wider, so I'm going to come out a little bit and draw it all the way around. And at the front and back of that detail, I'm dropping a line down there. How long should the arm be? I'm looking at my picture from the internet and it looks like it's just below the body. So I'm going to sketch in an ellipse there and then bring it back and blend it into the other one. The foot is directly underneath the arm. But to start off with, we're going to imagine it's just a brick shape. So I'm using my splat angles to draw the top of the brick. Now from each of the three corners, I'm going to draw a vertical or straight down line. Try and make sure they're all the same length. Mark off how deep you want your brick. Use your splat angles. And there's my brick. That doesn't look like a foot yet. Let's extend that line out the back and front. Mark off the same amount. And then join from there to make a triangle. Do the same thing at the back. Now on the other side, it's exactly the same. Extend the line, mark it off and join. Those two will come together like that. Can't see the one at the back. So there's an R2D2 foot. A little bit of detail like this, you can make up or find a picture on the web and um, copy all the details. So those little lines I'm guessing are hydraulic fluid lines, could be electrical cables. I'm going to line up the splat with the top of that shoulder and I'm going to bring it across. That tells me where to start the other one on the other side. I'm just repeating what I did at the front. But if you want to know how far to come down, you've already got it drawn. Just use the splat angle to come across and copy all those details. Let's get rid of that. So I need uh, another foot on the other side here somewhere. But where to start? Well, let's take that across on my splat angle. And I think the foot is going to be round about there somewhere. There's the bottom of the arm. I'm going to go round about there. It's a guess at the start. If it doesn't look right, just rub it out and, and change it, right? That's how we all learn. So that's the slopey bit. I'm just um, kind of fudging that. If it looks right, it's right. Darken it in and let's move on. Pretty cool. Here's the center of the shoulder. If I drew a line at the front forward facing on that robot, it would help me later on transfer all the detail across to there. Let's take that line all the way up to the head, which is a sphere. Uh, it will disappear from there in a kind of a shape like that. The point is, right at the top of the head would be around there somewhere. Tilt the splat over and use the small ellipse to draw a line. Now that you've got that shape to follow, draw another ellipse just outside and then another one a little bit further down again. Notice how they disappear. The ellipses aren't fully seen. In between those marks is kind of cut out. All right, now I've got two guidelines. I'm going to draw in these little details on the top until I can't see any more of them. There they are there. Now it's time for the eye. So we're going to draw a little box and I'm working on that center line that's forward facing. Here's another eye. This is the movable one. Okay, so we draw a little circle and then another one There's that little dark band. Going up a little bit, I'm drawing another guideline and a second one. I'm going to draw some little window shape decorations on that one as well. Could there be solar panels? Could there be access panels? What is under them? I want to know R2-D2, someone tell me. Here I'm drawing three little marks down the center line. And I'm going to draw using the splat a very light guideline for myself. Notice how the splat's always straight up and down, pretty much. The first detail I see is just like um, a darkened in rectangle. So we'll shade that in. 
Now under that is a shape that starts like a small peg, goes wider and then narrows down again. The exact shape doesn't really matter. As long as you've got a nice quality line, it'll look great. Just changing the detail slightly for the one below it. Now on that center line, it looks to me on the picture that I was copying, like I've got a little square and another square. Now when I say square, the top and bottom really follows and lips. I'm really enjoying this. I think this could be a port or a pl for a plug to go into or something like that. Another little square with a circle inside it. On the bottom, there's lots of little blips and they all angle in. Pick a spot, line up your splat, and then keep the splat on the spot, but tilt it over and then come back the other way. Can you see how they all point towards that one spot that you drew below? I'm drawing a little detail there. And the same length as all of those drop down a really long rectangle shape. This one I saw was like a little square and it had an ellipse and it was kind of darkened in all around it. I'm drawing the same shape inside there. That's called offsetting when you um, follow a shape a little bit closer in. Now what makes your drawing pop is a dark line right around the outside. It's called a cutting line. So I've sped this up and I'm whizzing right around the outside. Rule two, anything that's in front of something else gets its own dark line. And there as well, that R2-D2 body is in front of that leg. So he doesn't look like he's floating in air. What I'm drawing is maybe the inside of a spaceship or a room or something like that. This is not in isometric, it's in perspective. So the lines get smaller as they go away from you. If you're not sure what it is, Google it. That could be a window. Maybe outside the window we could see uh, an alien landscape with spacecraft in the air or suns or moons or anything like that. I would love you guys practice drawing R2-D2 then, using those skills, um, draw your own, design your own robot with your own details. As long as you pack it with details, use light and dark lines, it will look fantastic. Here I'm going back over some of the lines, a little bit of shading away from the window. The light and dark lines make it look really good. There you go, have fun. Thanks for drawing R2D2 with me, bye.